Hi, Andrew here. Boy, it feels good to be back after 10 days of working very hard offline. I've got a few exciting things to share with you before we start today's tutorial. The first one is we just launched our new e-learning series called the Snappy series. What are the Snappy series and how are they different from our normal e-learning? Simple, the Snappy series is really affordable. Check out the price. Secondly, the Snappy series goes straight into the technical specifics of camera and photography. Nothing about genre, but more about things like exposure, mastering your focusing, understanding focusing areas, focusing modes, histogram, colors, white balance, all this stuff will go under the Snappy series. The Snappy series would have at least six to 10 lessons in them. And the first one we launch is called the Snappy of how to shoot sharp photos. Interestingly, a lot of people write to me saying that I never get my photos sharp like how the pros do it. Sign up for this course is just 799 promo course. This price won't last forever. So head on in there, take this opportunity and enjoy the new series called the Snappy series. And the second type of e-learning that we are launching is called the collection. A lot of subscribers and viewers and beginners to photography write to me asking, what e-learning should I buy first? If I buy this one, which one should I buy it with? That's what we are trying to do here, the collection series. What we're doing with the collection series is straightforward. We take e-learnings that are related and we make them into a combo deal for you. And you save up to 50% when you purchase them this way. The first one that we launch is starting your photography journey collection. In there, there are three courses which are very related and very good for you if you're new to photography. And here's the exciting news. There are more of them coming. The deal is, if you sign up the collection series with the Snappy series now, under the promo, you get the Snappy for just one US dollar. So those are the things that we launch our website. And interestingly, during this COVID lockdown of me staying at home, a viewer went to one of our videos and then he wrote that, I enjoy this website, it's very technical, there are a lot of rules that I learned, but he said, Andrew, photography sometimes is not just about rules and techniques and technicalities. You should include human elements of cultures and all that in your lesson. And he got me thinking. So during these 10 days, we did a lot of research. And as such, I'm excited to bring you our new series on YouTube called Humans and Photography. Everyone, welcome to the first episode of Humans and Photography, where we learn about humans, culture, and photography, and videography, and how they form what we are today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Louis Degas. He's a French artist. Apart from being an artist, he involved himself a lot in photography. And in 1838, he took this photo. You must be thinking what this episode is about. I'm going to dig old photos and tell you that this is the first photo taken by human. No, before that, there were photos taken before this shot. But what made this shot interesting and worthy to be in this tutorial for us to discuss about is because this photo has humans in them. And this is the first photo you can actually see humans in them. But you're now thinking that how come the previous photos like this do not have humans? Simple, the problem of exposure. All photos like this are taken with these kind of cameras called the Degore type cameras. They need a long exposure time because when Louis took this photo, it was etched on a pewter plate coated with chemicals. And for image to form on the pewter plate, he needs to remove the landscape and expose it for a good 10 minutes. 10 minutes of exposure time. Well, you know what? Let me give you an example. Most of the YouTube video tutorials that have been watching on our YouTube channel here are about eight to only nine minutes long compared to his 10 minutes. So if you really look at these photos, there were cars and people passing by through the Boulevard du Temple. That's the location. But only two persons stood still throughout the whole 10 minutes. That's the shoe shine man and his customer. And that's how they're immortalized in Louis' photo. And that makes you also wonder why 
do all people in all these old photos do not smile? That explains it. One of the reasons is that you need to hold still for 10 minutes. It's hard to smile for 10 minutes. That explains why they look like that. So apart from that, if you look at all photographers, they actually needed props to prop you up. And hence you have this term props. So they actually have metal stands to hold your hand, your neck and all that just to make sure that you stay still during these 5 to 10 minutes to get your image edge. And speaking of which, it's a blessing that we do not need to do that these days. So Louis had three challenges. The first one he needed to know how big that hole has to be on a camera for lights to come in. The bigger the hole, the more the light and he might be overexposed. And he had to spend another 8 hours then. Louis took 8 hours to take this photo. If the hole is too small, then he won't have enough for lights. Which brings us to the second challenge. The chemical that is coated on his pewter plate is fixed. It's not like your ISO where you can make it more sensitive or less sensitive. So he needs to figure out and calculate how long it needs to be exposed to light, not forgetting the size of the hole. And his third challenge, which is one of the scariest, is exposing your camera for a good 10 minutes, lighting conditions will change. So if you look at this photo, this was taken of another time, perhaps on the same day. How do we know? Look at the shadows. He would have been doing this the whole day. Which brings to mind that modern photographers like you and I, we need a better way of knowing how long to expose our digital sensor to the camera. I mean, the size of the hole, we do have the aperture F value. And that's why modern cameras include an exposure sensor, which will give us an exposure meter. What are they? How do they work? So if you look at the film cameras that I used to have, they don't have exposure meter. What are these? These are actually sensors that modern cameras have. Somewhere about here, just about above the prism. The reason they put a sensor there, because your cameras actually have three sensors. Let me share this with you. The first one is your acquisition sensor. It helps you to capture the image, the one that you adjust the ISO. And then the second one is your focusing sensor. It helps you to know that your photos are focused. So the third one is your exposure sensor. So I'm glad we have this exposure sensor. What it does, it doesn't take photo. What it does, it allows you to know whether you are correctly exposed. And this is where it's tricky. So modern cameras have this sensor to tell you that you're correctly exposed or underexposed. So it needs to be able to put this into a ruler, I may call it. This is your ordinary stationary ruler. And this is how a ruler looks like for a photographer. This is called an exposure meter. But interestingly, unlike your ruler, it has this zero in the center. And it has a positive here and it has negative there. Well, unlike your stationary ruler, there is no way for you to measure a piece of string that is negative in length. But in lighting, in photography, in exposure, you need to know whether you're too bright or too dark and hence why you have this. But if you put your camera on auto mode, you will not see this. The only way to see this is to change it to manual mode and this will pop up. So head on to your camera's exposure dial. So when we say manual mode photography, we mean manual mode exposure, which means that the camera will not decide for you. You need to tell the camera to shoot it bright, dark, very dark, very bright, or correct exposure. And correct exposure is one of the trickiest. Same like what Louis had to go through, we have to go through that. And it's quite subjective. But let me start this correctly first. Let's look at this color bar. Let's remove color from this. And then you have the tones. And for you to be good in photography, you need to be good in understanding exposure. And that's why I removed the color. And now you have the tones. This is called the shadow, the shadow tone. So this end is called your highlight tone. And this range here is where you want to put most of your well-lit subject in the middle tone. So you have the shadow tone, the mid tone, and the highlight tone. And modern camera's exposure meter needs to report this to you. Now let's take up the camera and point it to a scene now. 
how does the camera know where to look at? How does the camera even know who you're shooting? So most cameras would do a metering method of measuring exposure by average. So if you look at your viewfinder, it has grids like this. And each one of these are exposed to light very differently. Let me explain to you this icon that you see, this symbol that you see in your camera. This is called the average metering. Nikon calls it matrix metering. Sony calls it multi-segment metering. And Canon calls it evaluative metering. Why the different name? That is because they evaluate this scene differently. But ideally, this is how the symbol looks like. Let me explain to you how you can use this symbol and make some sense out of this. This is your subject, the main important part of your photo, which must be correctly exposed. Not too bright, not too dark. In this case, it's the girl. And this is a foreground. And this is the background. So if you look at this symbol now, hey, it kind of makes sense now. My subject in the center, and then the foreground, and then the background. Let me ask you a question. If you are a camera, which of these layers would be the brightest? You're right, the background. And which one would be the darkest? Presumably the foreground, because the girl's shadow is actually blocking the foreground. So as you can see, my point is, your camera cannot evaluate until it knows what is going on. And that is why modern cameras have different evaluation methods and different metering styles. That is why you have the average metering and then you have the center weighted metering that only looks at the center and then you have the spot metering. And then you have modern cameras, the mirrorless cameras even have combinations of this together. And what makes them so good are the algorithms of each of these cameras being different. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm outdoor now and this is a short little experiment that I want to do. I've got the first camera we're going to evaluate. I've got this on evaluative metering, the Canon's evaluative metering. We try to set everything the same. The ISO is 400. The aperture is f5.6 and I've got this at 1 over 50 of a second on the shutter speed. I know that the T value and the brightness of the lens can affect this, but this is not what this experiment is about. It just want to see how the exposure meter of every camera is going to be different. The first one. With all this setup of 400 at 5.6 at the shutter speed of 1 over 50, we are one third of a stop, two third of a stop under. So to do this shot correctly, I have to be brightening up my camera. It's at mid-tone in zero at, at 5.6 ISO 400 and the shutter speed of 1 over 30. So it's under a little bit. Let's try another one. So as you can see, they are all almost identical but slightly different. But bear in mind that they can be different like I say because of the lens and that's where the T-value is very important for every lens. Not all lens are going to be that brightness. Some can be brighter. We'll talk about that later. But the whole idea is to show you that different camera uses different algorithm for their metering. And I'm glad, unlike Louis Degas, I don't need to stand here a good 10 minutes. So my little experiment just showed you different camera, different brand, different model evaluated like differently. This is because all their meters have different evaluation algorithm. Some of them would evaluate the background differently. And some of them would evaluate that the background is supposed to be darker. So the first thing you need to do when you get yourself a new camera is to find out how the metering algorithm of this particular model works. Is it always under? Is it always over? The camera doesn't over or under. It's the meter, not accurate. And not accurate is also subjective. It's because some of you like to shoot bright and some of you like to shoot under. Oh hey, if you really paid attention, you would have noticed that I pointed all the different brands to the same composition where there were no backlights, even lighting with the sun at the back. 
That's why you couldn't see so much of differences in the algorithms that they used. In the next episode, we're going to repeat this simple experiment, but this time we're going to point them to background with strong backlight. And I assure you, you're going to see the differences in the algorithm that they use in each brain. Let's repeat this experiment, but on another episode. So stay tuned. In the coming episodes, I'm going to be sharing with you how you use these metering modes effectively. They are like measuring devices. If you need to measure your waist, then you use a measuring tape. But if you are an engineer, you need to measure the dimension of a room. Probably you use the metal tape or the laser pointer. So knowing how to change your tool, your measuring method or modes would be important. I hope you enjoy yourself with this tutorial. Head on to our website. I hope you support our e-learning. The premium courses is still undergoing a promo, so if you haven't subscribed to that, go ahead and subscribe to our premium courses because it's just 25 US dollar for the whole year and every week you're going to get two to four lessons on photography being uploaded for the whole year. And don't forget our snappy e-learnings. Two of them are undergoing pre-launch promo now. They'll be launched very soon. If you sign up now, you'll be enjoying a tremendous saving. I'll see you in the next episode.